All right, so this is the support video for Celtic Knot 2. Okay, Celtic Knot 2 is like we take a Celtic Knot uh, that was done in Adobe Illustrator and we're going to make it laser friendly. Okay, so we can cut it out on a laser cutter. So, let's begin. So this is the vector knot, Celtic knot. And it's comprised of a bunch of vector lines. So if I went to go cut this on a laser cutter, it would cut out a bunch of shapes. It would cut out anywhere it saw these lines. Essentially, it would make a bunch of unique shapes and it would all fall apart. So what we have to do is make a kind of a product out of this. Like what would a product look like? Can I make this into a necklace or can I make it into a wall hang or something like that? And I can. So we're going to convert it over to some kind of tangible product that we can make on a laser cutter. Go back to preview. So if it's made out of all vector lines, the first thing we're going to do is make those lines thick. Well, like that thick. Okay, 14 point. That looks kind of cool. Okay, then we're going to take this and we're going to rasterize it. This will collapse it back into pixels. Okay. Then we're going to click back on it and then we're going to image trace it again and that'll collapse or reinitialize all the vectors, but it'll look a lot different. We're going to go to default. Then we're going to go to the image trace options. We're going to say ignore white. And essentially that looks good. So we're going to hit expand. All right, let's look at the vectors now. So now it's got this pattern, but it's got a closed loop system in it. So that even if these fall out, it'll look kind of neat. We still don't want all these things to fall out, however. Um, yeah, I don't know if that would look good. So we'll have a raster and a vector design. Vector means to cut out in laser terms, and raster means to burn in in laser terms. Oops. All right, so the first thing we need to do is go back to preview mode, and we're going to make a duplicate of this thing using Alt, click and drag. Oop, let's zoom out. All right, let's steal a few of these, get them out of here. So back to outline mode. I'm jumping around a lot, by the way. S what we're going to do is delete all of these bigger shapes and leave the smaller ones. Okay, I like that. That's kind of neat. Okay, so we're going to take this curve, and unfortunately, we can't go stealing a curve. We have to do this little method right here. We have to take this and make a copy of it. And then delete all the little dudes. Okay, so now we got three things going on here. Uh, this one, we're going to make it bigger. That's called offsetting in Illustrator. So, object, path, offset path. And I'm going to choose actual inches. 0.125 is one eighth of an inch difference. Wow, that did not change a whole lot. So I'm going to guess that this is a pretty big design. Let's find out how big this thing is. Let's go to Document Setup and Edit Artboards. Okay, in 
in inches, notice it's giving me points over here, what is it in inches? How do I do that? Hit escape, go view, rulers, show rulers. Okay, right click on the top and choose inches. Now when I go to view, document setup, edit artboards, I have it in inches. So this is eight and a half by 11 and that's why it's so big. Now I'm thinking of a, of a wall hang that's just like maybe four by, let's see, what's a good dimension? What's a good translation of eight and a half by 11? Uh, four by six? Yeah, four by six. So let's go four by six. That's a very common measurement in print. I'm going to take all of this and kind of shrink it down. And as long as it stays within the ratio of four by six, it doesn't have to be four. In fact, I like that. I don't know. Let's just do that. All right. Now that I know that it's not huge, I can then do that object path, offset path. And notice it's in inches now, so I can decide. So now that I know it's four by six, how about a quarter of an inch, 0.25? I'll just preview that this time. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's hit it OK. All right. So now I want this outside edge. So I delete the one in the center. And I put this over here. Looks pretty sweet so far. Now we need to, a way to hang it. Something to hang it. All right. So I'm going to draw a circle. And that circle, I'm going to make, let's say, 0.5 by 0.5. Okay. And then I'm going to make another circle. I'm just going to duplicate that one. And this one's going to be 0.25 by 0.25. Okay, we're going to put this one in the center of that one. And we're going to make an, uh, like an eyelet. So if you grab this and then hold shift and click this, we are going to go into this thing called Pathfinder. If you don't have Pathfinder up here, it's also located under um, Pathfinder. Right there. So it does have its own palette. So we're going to subtract this from that. That is called minus. Okay, so it didn't look like much change, but now it's a, it's a shape comprised of the two. And we're going to put that up here and move it. It's about right here. Okay. So essentially we want this and this shape to be combined. And remember this is in the center of everything of that. I know that because I saw it, but if you want to see it again, I'll just drag a ruler out. Boom. It's sorted in the center. Yeah. All right, so this one and this one need to be combined. So that is called Unite. All right, what's this one for, right? That's what you're asking. What is this one for? I thought it'd be nice to have the holes in the center of these cut out. So we're going to use just the holes here. And we're going to take and 
take off the outline. So in this case, I'm going to delete the outside. And then we're going to put these holes back. All right, so we have this hot mess all laying on top of each other. We got to make some layers. Okay. We need two layers. This is the layer palette. We'll call this cut and this one raster. Okay. So we need all the cut objects on that layer. So there's more cut objects than there are raster objects. This thing is my raster object. I'm going to move it up. Uh, let me show you what that looks like here in preview mode. That's why we're not in preview mode. Okay? <laughs> so go to outline mode. Boom. Okay? Once we have established all of this, now we're going to pretty up preview mode so it looks more normal for somebody and they can work in it. So. We'll go to cut first. And let's go to preview mode. So this has to have a certain thickness on the line for laser cutters. Usually it's dictated by your laser cutter software. For ours, it's 0 .001 IN or 0 .072 points to cut stuff. Okay. So we choose over here, there's a fill and there's a stroke. We're going to choose no fill and we're going to choose black for the stroke. Then I'll highlight everything and go to the stroke and say 0 .072 PT. Okay, that will take and tell the software, hey, Anytime I see a 0 .072 point line, I'm going to cut it. Okay, this one, it doesn't have to have that. It rasters, okay? Anytime it sees black, it's going to burn into the object. Whatever I do, wood, plastic, whatever I, I put this on. Essentially, I have this. I'm just going to kind of move this up to the corner. I like the size. I think it's a good size. So now what we're going to do, we're going to tuck the um, document up. We do that by going into document setup, edit artboards, and we're just going to kind of go like this to the document. We're going to leave a little bit of space though. Good, good. So let's kind of like review these, um, just see what else I can use this product for. I'm just going to show transparency grid. You can see that since it's a, a vector object, it has no white background. This might be handy if you were like to use this on a website too. I like it. I like it. So in order to get it over to the laser cutter, however, this is how it happens. Save as. Celtic Knot Laser. And drop this down to CS4. And hit OK. And OK. All right, so now we have a laser-friendly file. It has to be saved onto a flash drive. You must have this as an AI file. It must be a CS4 variation. The reason for that is the software over on the laser cutter is older 
but the driver works better with it. So we compensate, and we do that a lot in graphic design print. We have Adobe who constantly updates, and then we have hardware that doesn't always update. Okay, so we always compensate by going to a lower version of software just to go over to that machine. Okay, that's why we save it as CS4. All right, let's put it on there and then we'll get started on how to um, get it ready to cut out a product on the laser cutter. All right, so now I'm going to explain to younger students how to combine two things together, okay? So this is just for younger students that just don't want to do that, but that's what you do to really learn is to apply two objects together. So I'm going to put a video below on a process that I did for laser cutting a drawing, okay? How you get it to the laser cut pro process is one thing, but once you get to the laser cutter, it's a repeated value over and over again. Anytime I go to cut an object, same thing, same thing, same thing, over and over again. So below is a video called the raster cut design to laser cut from drawing, okay? And if you go into the video about Yeah, it's a I'll give you that one. Uh, 48 minutes into it, okay? I do a raster cut job. It's the same deal. So this video, the whole video, is just to get you to understand, one, how to do vector lines over to a raster, okay? And then make a tangible product. Then... I'm going to give you a resource that allows you to cut it out. And it's going to be a different resource to get you guys to get used to that. As a young mind, trust me, after 20 years of teaching, that is the portion that's missing most in the student brain to be able to put two things together. So there you go. I helped you. So now go watch that video and find 48 minutes in and apply the first concept to the second concept. Enjoy.